Welcome to circuitbelly.com. I am Gaurav. Today in this video, I am going to show you another IKEA sensor. This is a door sensor or you can also call it a window sensor. You can see in front of your screen, it's going to be two part. This part is I believe magnetic and that's the where the sensor is lying and it's supposed to detect open and closing of doors or surfaces or windows or anything for that matter. It can be connected to IKEA hub. It can be directly connected to IKEA bulbs as well. Made in China. Nothing, nothing special. It cost around 10 euros in Germany. And this is the part number 8504308. So let's take it out of the packaging and we will see how this door and window sensor works. It's Zigbee as it says on the back. I believe it will use same MG21 chipset and we will try to tear it apart. Okay, there's a sensor and there is the counterpart of it. So, is there anything else in the packaging? Packaging only has a manual. We are not interested in that. So, we are interested in the sensor. We are going to take it apart. I am not interested in turning it on and uh, using it for that matter. And I am just interested in how does it work and what kind of maybe Hall effect sensor. I hope they did not went absolutely crude and went with a read switch or something like that. So, let's take it apart. This thing is passive. This part is does not have as a teaser tape on back of it. Teza is a German company. Same stuff, Teza on the back. So let's take it out. I'll use my Victorinox. So on the back, it, uh, this is the thing which goes into your door or your window and it sits right there like this and you're supposed to have this thing mounted like this and this goes on the sides. So battery compartment is here. Let's look at the back of the device. It has product information. The sensor is I believe again called parasol or something like that. This is the pairing button and we will unscrew this metal screw using my very fancy screwdriver. It's out I believe. So this is it, this is how it looks and now to take it further apart either we need to pray it on this crease or something like that. I believe we need to pray it on that crease because you can see this part is definitely this part and we, I see a crease there and it is going all the way through the device and I believe this will just, just pop out. So we'll use some force on it, we'll see how well it goes. Let's switch the tools on my Victorinox. This is a little bit sharper. Maybe I'll try to press it from this side. Not really. Bad way. So we got it somewhat open. Okay, so it's almost completely open now. So I do not think you can undestructively tear it down because you can see it's ultrasonically welded all over the edges. And this is the small plastic window or maybe rubber window. Yeah, plastic window and which uh, shines this LED through when you trigger this sensor. So, there you have it, we are in. And these are the two battery clips which goes to a AAA battery. And this is our part. Let's find out what does they have as a part. Let's zoom in a bit. So this is the furthest I can zoom with my macro lens. You can see the whole chipset, everything is fit onto this one PCB. I'll take out the PCB soon. And I can already see the part number. I can somewhat see the part number. Let me clean this uh, marker with the alcohol or something like that so that we can see it better. So the marker is cleaned off and I hope you can see the part number now somehow. I cannot see it because I'm looking through a screen 
and it is definitely not MG21. It is MG24, MG24P010V, something like that. Let me Google this part and we will find out which exact part it is. So, as per the Google, this is part is EFR32MG24 from uh, Silicon Labs. It's a multi protocol SOC, supports Meta, OpenThread, Zigbee, BLE, Bluetooth Mesh, and proprietary 2.4 GHz. Let's do one thing let's take it further apart and we'll take out the PCB and we'll take a look what's on the other side of the PCB. How should I approach it? I do not think it's locked, it will just lift off, I believe. You see on the top there's a small antenna there and uh, I also do not see any hall effect I see until unless it's very small they are only capacitors, passive and uh, resistors there there's not much going on there there of course has a very tiny little fuse there and this is the LED which shines through the window an oscillator and on the top you have of course the antenna I just said so let's try to take it out I will not use my expensive screwdriver so it's as easy as this as easy as this you can just lift off so there we have it this is the thing this is how it looks let's zoom in a bit and of course you see the pairing switch for some reason I see an inductor and there is one SOT IC most likely it's IC because the really long part number I do not think it to be a MOSFET or transistor otherwise they will not have this long part number there there is a version marking version 2.0 GND and reset test pad, battery test pads and GND test pads one more time clock, DI, TCK, TX, RX I believe it's T. I cannot read it because it's very small on the camera screen. So let's investigate this little part one more time. I will take it under my magnifying glass and uh, try to analyze the part number. So this little IC, which you see this three pin part marked 6811T22, it appears to be uh, some kind of boost converter. It converts 1.2 volts to 2 volts with the help of this little inductor which you see right next to it. I do not know why would you need to generate two volts there and it appears to be this is from a Chinese company and part number is OC6811 OC6811 and this with the help of inductor it is generating two volts for some reason I do not know right now how does it how does it detect the presence of of, uh, of the side panel and let's flip it let's investigate this little part which you see there and we will try to find out its data sheet and what does it say and if it is a MOSFET or was it a, what is it or, or or maybe this is the Hall effect sensor for, our, for ours most likely it's a Hall effect sensor is going to be because I, otherwise I believe it is going to be a Hall effect sensor because you see this part is pretty much magnetic and let me demonstrate a bit yeah. So, I don't think you cannot feel it, but this is definitely magnetic. So most likely it's going to be a Hall effect sensor. So let's 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 find out. Let's find out further. So the marking on this little uh, SMD part, they say HM3521. And uh, first googling it turned out to be a dual diode, but I I don't know right now because I do not see any other contraption how can it detect the presence of a magnet on the side because this, these are all little components they are all meant for the antenna and this is a simple oscillator this is a fuse and this is a LED and other components are also doesn't look like there is some kind of inductive detection without a Hall effect sensor maybe the PCB is playing something role there some role there because you must understand maybe Hall effect sensors are very expensive and they do not want to put uh, expensive part in there and that's why they avoid it and they played some kind of trick I do not know how does it detect the presence of the other part and but we'll find out we will look further so this MH3521 marked part it appears to be a Hall effect sensor from a company called Magna Sensor Technologies or something like that 
I have googled around exec data sheet you cannot find but uh, you can google for MH281 and it shows pretty much exactly same stuff and it pretty much makes sense because there is no other part which can do magnetic detection so we'll try to investigate further and we will probe this magnetic sensor and we will probe this Hollyback sensor what I will do I will connect my bench power supply between these two terminals to power it and we'll probe this guy when it outputs and uh, Probe this guy when we try to get the magnet near to it and try to measure its output and see now you can see this magnet and uh, let's see let's get started connect to the power and we'll see how does it work so this is I believe negative and this is what is left is definitely positive. You can even, you can even see the markings there. This marking for ground and this marking will be bad. I'll supply 1.25 volts to it because these sensors are supposed to be powered by rechargeable IKEA LADA batteries. And uh, these are nickel metal hydride batteries and they are from inner voltage around 1.2 volts. This is my HMC8043 on the third channel. There's the device connected and you can sometimes see a peak of a little tiny bit current. Let me take this sensor and uh, activate it. Maybe it peaks a little bit higher. Yeah, now you can see. Trying to activate the sensor, activate and deactivate. You can also see there's a, there's a LED activating. Little red LED on the behind. Maybe I'll flip it. It goes away supposed to trigger the LED maybe this side yeah there it is there so when this LED lights up of course it is going to consume more current so I'll try to activate the sensor so I'll try to activate the sensor now it's activated 5 milliampere maybe at peak at some point 6 milliampere this power supply is pretty decent and it does resistors quite fast but not that it's not meant for these kind of it's not meant for analysis of these kind of load it doesn't matter we are not interested in power supply or anything else. Let's get back and we'll, our primary job is to find out how does this guy detects the presence of a magnet nearby. And our primary investigation candidate is this little guy, this little IC, a three pin part. And I assume it's going to be Hall effect sensor as people pointed out. This is a this is a charge pump controller. We can measure the voltage of this guy as well if it is measuring somewhere two volts and uh, we'll see I have a schematic of this guy so I know how to measure this and we'll see because it's a charge from a controller so it's pretty much a standard schematic 3 pin device it's, uh, we can measure it it's not a big deal I'm recording web view of my RTB2004 now you can see along when I probe it you will be able to exactly see so we'll try to probe one more time with the DC DC converter and uh, you'll be able to exactly see what I'm probing and you'll be able to enjoy yourself the measurements and let's get started. So my probe is connected, probe's ground is connected and Let's look at the ground and let's look at the input voltage and you can see it's 1.25 but we cannot measure it. Maybe I'll get the DVM out. So there we have it 20 millivolt DC. Yeah. So we are measuring right. This is our input as you can see and this is our output 2.25 volts and most likely we can measure the switching frequency and everything else as well there set to pretty fast time base let me reduce the time base a bit
so it does something not necessarily having a very what do you call it uh, switching regulator like characteristics maybe I'll zoom out the time base further it's too fast that should be doing it so it has some kind of weird switching going on but it doesn't matter to us we are more interested in this guy and let's see that's measure is pin number one there is nothing there absolutely zero sorry pin number three let's measure pin number one some kind of pulse is going on some similar kind of pulse is going on okay let's get the magnet near to it and we will find out how does it look with the magnets on let me focus a better okay so should focus a little better now so we have similar kind of pulses but we have still same kind of pulses we have similar pulses there as well let's take the sensor away from it keep uh, keeping the probe probing okay so this is how it looks It's definitely different, a little bit higher, I have no idea what it's supposed to look like really. So this is the pulse and this doesn't change. Let me probe this guy. I do not see any changes. Let me set the trigger to a little bit lower and maybe not auto. So that we can see a bit better. There is no change on the spin. The only change is here. When the sensor is in the contact, it gets higher. And not in the contact, it's pretty low. I believe this is the Hall effect sensor. What kind of Hall effect sensor this is, I cannot stay, let's tell you. So. because I cannot find the data sheet actually most likely this is the power and they are probing this sensor regularly instead of probing it constantly and they are trying to save power there most likely and I don't know though yeah yeah so this is exactly what it does so that's it for this investigation I hope you enjoyed this video and you can visit my website www.circuitbike.com for photos and everything else. So bye bye, thank you, tschüss.